Welcome to the beautiful city of Paris. Over the next week, Laura and I will be exploring everything from the tourist attractions to the more local spots, and we want to put together a video that kind of gives you an overall feel of what it's like to live in Paris. Now, by no means am I an expert on the subject, but that's why I've gone out of my way to meet locals and get an idea of what they recommend to see here in Paris. And welcome to day number one in France. It's just the most stunning city I have ever seen. And one of the most amazing things that's like just blowing me away is whether you're on the main road or going down an alleyway, it looks like the set of like a model's photo shoot. Let's go get some breakfast. Bonjour. Alors, qu'est-ce que vous avez commandé? Well, I'm getting the avocado and toast and a matcha latte. I ordered a breakfast burrito, and this is pretty much the opposite of what a Parisian would order. Parisians are notorious for eating very light breakfasts. In Paris, it's very common to get some Something light like a croissant, maybe put a bit of jam on it or a bit of chocolate spread. Hello, you see, we've got some hot baguette with a ton of chocolate, and this is yogurt with granola and some honey. Are you sure? It is not what we ordered, but I'm Wait, pretty sure. Pretty much anywhere in Paris, you will find bakeries with amazing fresh bread. Now that we've started our day with a delicious Parisian breakfast, it's time to go wander the streets. Each of these streets have different stories to tell, and they make for incredible shopping. So as you guys know, one of the main things in Paris is the fashion and like everywhere we go we're seeing these amazing like one-off shops. I bought these super styling shoes for 45 euros. My feet have never felt so free. La liberté pour les pieds. That means freedom for the feet. It's actually been cool watching you speak French to everyone. I'm like, oh. Just... You can say it to turn on. Have I, yeah, are you, you feeling are le French. passion dans le coeur? The Frenchmen, we are irresistible. Irresistible. So you know how I was going to do that DIY video? So you're telling me that's a designer dress? $900 US? So you pay the extra $850 to have it cut and split open? Yeah. Awesome. Look at this coffee shop, it's like three seats. That's cool. After a pretty laid back morning, it was time to go do a little day trip. We headed off to what is known as Rue de Cremieux, and this is actually a road that even most locals won't know about. For Laura and I, this trip was about spending quality time together, but we also really wanted to meet new friends. And so we set out a couple Instagram stories asking French people to DM us, and we ended up meeting with these two guys right here. Welcome to the video, guys. Hi, hello. This is Francois and Ludovic. Yeah. This is Laura. Right now we're exploring some of the hidden Parisian secrets. All right, so where are you taking us now? Uh, I think we should go to the fifth neighborhood by okay. Rue Mouffetard. Oh, nice. That's the street I, I told you about earlier, which is kind of like the fancy, chill, like really nice and cheap bars. But you, you will like it. You will really like it. Let's do it. For 1.7 euros, you can rent a bicycle and basically it allows you to go from place to place in Paris. You have to bring it back to the ports every 30 minutes, otherwise you're charged an extra euro. You can take out again for free? Yeah, you just put it back for like two minutes and right. then you can use it again. To truly experience Paris, get yourself on a bicycle and go explore. One thing that should be said about Paris is that for such a large city, there's lots of ways to get around. What do you think, Laura? Is this a good way to get around? I love it. It's so much fun. If the distance is too long to walk, you have bicycles that you can rent on just about every major intersection. And they even have this thing called City Scoop, which is essentially a communal scooter that you can just leave in certain checkpoints. Would you say like tourists come down this area or is this more uh, local? Mostly locals. Yeah. But we gotta go down the street to remove. Oh, sorry, sorry, I had to interrupt. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what do you call that? Oh, uh, we call this electric motorcycle. How fast can it go? This one, 50 uh, kilometer per hour. Bye! There's the Rue Mouffetard that we're gonna go to right now. It's kind of like a small village. You can get some like French cheese, French wine, a French bakery. Oh, this so is cool. like one of the best parts of Paris. Like this is my favorite. Some young people go there with the, the guitars or even they bring their drums and they just like play music here. This is the real Paris. This is what I was hoping to find. And again, like I say it every time, but until you meet the locals, you will never understand the actual culture. You will never understand the city you're in. And like, I'm only on the cusp of understanding what they have to offer here, but I got to start somewhere. This looks like a set. The Parisians are all faking something. They're trying to put on a show for us. <laughs> yeah, no, I Real. What kind of food is that? It's uh, Iranian. Armenian and Italian? Uh, no, Armenian. Uh, Armenian. Iran. No, it's vodka. It's vodka. What are you doing? I need it. I don't know. Ah, crepes. Do you like crepes? Well, yeah, of crepes. course. I love crepes. it. <laughs> <laughs> Every way possible. Yeah. Salted, like sweet. Nutella. Yeah. Nutella is the Nutella. best, of course. Yeah. So, five euros. You get a beer, you get some french fries. You're good to go. I'm really hungry because I'm always hungry, so this is great. So, you got au petit grec, and then right next door. <laughs> 
They're selling the exact same thing, but they don't have a lineup. This is the lineup just to get in here. Well, we've been waiting for 45 minutes for <laughs> au petit. It's better be good. That is a monstrosity of a creation. Yes. It was worth 45 minute wait. Thank you so much for showing us around. Thank you, guys. It's a city of love. There's such a unique energy and charm to this city that I've truly never seen anywhere else in the world. This style that you see here is known as Osmanian, and that is the beautiful Parisian architecture that you've come to know and love with the beautiful rock outside, the detailed steel gates. If you think of Paris as a series of circles, like starting from the center of the city, they build out circles almost like a snail shell. These circles are called arrondissements. First arrondissement all the way to the 12th arrondissement is where you'll see a lot of this style with the Osmanian buildings. The history that's here is just so rich. When the Nazis actually came and took over Paris, Hitler commanded that this city be preserved because he was so in love with the architecture. Even though it was taken over, for the most part there was no damage done to most of these buildings and so they stand today just like they were hundreds of years ago. So right now I'm actually meeting with another couple. We met at this incredible restaurant called Pink Mama's. And this is a four floor restaurant. On the bottom floor is their pizza area and each floor prepares a specialty of food. So uh, right here is like a beef specialty, uh, one floor up is the anti pasties and I think the top floor was like cocktails and vegan food. You've got like all sorts of old school paintings and maps. Hi. This is Claudia and this is Jeremy yeah. and Hello. where are we going next? We're going to the Sacré Coeur and yeah. to Montmartre, which is a cool neighborhood and you're gonna like it. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty much the north of the city. Okay, cool. This is predominantly like locals living yeah. out in this area? All locals there. If you go to the Sacré Coeur, it's a little bit more touristic but yeah. here it's a little bit quiet. People like to hang out there, have a drink and just chill. That's weird. One of the amazing things I noticed about Montmartre was that after spending a lot of time in Champs-Élysées and around other tourist attractions, I finally felt like I was in the local side of Paris. As we headed up the hill a little further, that became less true. It became just as touristy as being at the Eiffel Tower. Claudia, is that something you guys do in Paris? You put parrots on your heads? Yeah, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> this is the incredible cathedral known as Sacré-Cœur. Bye. <laughs> Laura and I walked across the street to a random French restaurant. They had all my now, but come on, they are now scalgo. Do you know what that is? Yeah, I don't want it. I know. Is this true? Or fish? Escargot. Snail. It's a snail. We're gonna get a snail. No, I'm not. Alright, so, like, I speak French really well, like, conversational level, just fine. But when it gets into the more detailed words, like, when you look at a menu and they've got the special ways they cook, and, like, all that stuff is a bit over my head. So I actually just had uh, someone come and help me order. I'm like, I want the Frenchest meal you can order. So we've gone ahead, we've ordered some specially prepared French veal. Uh, we've gotten some beef bourguignon, the escalgot, so we've got some snail on its way. Not nervous, but not excited to eat it. I think that's everything. And oh yeah, and an assiette de fromage. So we've got cheese on its way too to start off. As our server has so kindly showed us, what you do is you first actually drain out the escargot. Drain out turn its it, mucus? <laughs> turn it upside down. Wait, you got a fancy tool for this. Because the French are civilized. So you empty out the sauces inside, the juice comes up, and then he was saying the key is to taste it first. I'm not exactly sure why, but I'll give it that, that it does taste really good. The sauces inside, it's like a, I don't know, buttery and... pesto -y. It's like butter and pesto. So you taste that, now the magic happens. Just gotta pull this little guy out, okay? Put it on a piece of bread, and voila! What's the texture? It's a little chewy. C'est excellent. How is it? I love cheese. Very good. Yeah. So we're about an hour into our meal here. I gotta say, in France, the service is not the fastest, but it's all about the experience of eating and like everything from the entree of the escargot to the cheeses, like that literally took half an hour to eat, you know? Life is good. All right, Laura, I got us a little something. And for dessert, we've got ourselves some creme brulee. It's a custard, and then they take a blowtorch to the top of it, and it creates this really tough top, and you can just crack it like so. And you. Loved the beef. What was it called? The beef. Beef bourguignon. Beef or bourguignon. bourguignon. <laughs> it's hard to say. Bourguignon. It was the sauce in it was so delicious, and thank you for encouraging me to try French food I wouldn't normally try. Yes. For like a really romantic Parisian dinner, like everything from wine to dessert, it was 73 euros. And in France, you actually don't tip, so the tip is included in the price of the meal. 
I just saw a rat run by. Ratatouille! Hello, my lovely petunias. Franklin. Now, while it's true, you probably won't find a ton of French people hanging out near the Eiffel Tower or the Arc de Triomphe. There's a couple tourist destinations that I think even most French people should see. As of right now, there is probably about a three hour line wrapping around the neighborhood to get into the catacombs. I was like, ugh, I'm not gonna go today. I don't know if I'll see them at all. I was really disappointed. And then I went online and found Skip the Line tickets. It was like two or three times more expensive. Uh, I ended up paying like 40 US. I think it's worth it. To be honest, I'm not waiting three hours on one of my precious days here in Paris. There was only one ticket left online, so Laura is gonna take one for the team. She's and gonna go chill. shopping. She's gonna go shopping <laughs> while I look at dead people. But look at the line starting here. All the way around there, all the way around. I feel like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. I got my golden ticket. See you later, the waiters. How's the line, guys? I got a, I got a ticket. It's honestly embarrassing. Stop. I got the ticket. I got the golden ticket. Got the audio guide right there in my hand. So it's 14 degrees down here all year round. It's unaffected by the weather up there because it's 20 meters below ground. Lower than the sewage system, the subway system. This was built in the 12th century for limestone mining. Once they were finished mining, it basically was repurposed as a new form of cemetery. And as you can see, this is a massive pile of bones, like strategically placed to make the most of the space they had because there's roughly six to seven million people's bones in here. And uh, essentially what happened was the French throughout all of history of Paris had been burying people in cemeteries like we see today, but the cemeteries were bursting at the seams. There was too many people in them. And so the best option was to take these underground limestone tunnels and make them into basically an underground cemetery. They brought all of the dead from above down here to avoid the spread of infection, the smell that was getting into the air, and just to simply make room for a very developed city. I really recommend that if you're gonna do this, get one of the proper tour guides. Don't just do the audio guide. Like I was kind of listening in on one of the groups and he was saying the coolest stuff. He was talking about the World War II implications of the tunnels. He was talking about like the beheading of the king and the 700 Swiss guards that were brought down there and buried after they were killed by the revolutionaries. Like all this incredible stuff. It's like that is the history that we are here to explore. Let's go. Taxi's here. It is a free-for-all on these roads. Like, if you compare it to like North America, traffic is crossing into each other's lanes and scooters are zipping in between cars and kind of takes me back to Bangkok a little bit. A little more structured than that, but not by much. One of the crazy things is like how multicultural the city is too. Like, you got falafels. All cultures are accounted for here. It's a melting pot of culture and amazing food. One of the cool things about the city is that literally like anywhere that has somewhat of a developed area or has a coffee shop or restaurant, it almost always has open Wi-Fi. Now there's a few that are password protected, but like if that's the case, then you ask the restaurant you're in and they give you a password. Everywhere we've been, it's just like, boom, I can now use my Uber app, go and check my Facebook. Like, And the Wi-Fi speeds have been really good here. And the place we're staying in has the fastest upload speed I think I've ever seen. Like I uploaded five gigabytes in one and a half minutes. Beat that. La météo est fou. Je venu ici à Paris. Mais pas pour ça. How am I supposed to do my thing? How am I supposed to rent a scooter when the weather is raining the cats and the chats? It's sunny now, but it definitely was not cooperating this morning. Yeah. Hello. Alright guys, so 35, 40 minutes outside of Paris. This is Bastien. Hi. <laughs> and his fiance, Terry. Hi. During the summer on Saturdays, they have a fireworks show in Versailles. This palace almost bankrupted the entire country of France many years ago when Louis XIV basically took all of their resources, pulled it into creating a super palace, and he wanted to make this the center of France. He was unsuccessful in making it the center of France. He succeeded in building the palace, and that's where we're gonna go watch the fireworks from in just a bit. Right here, you're looking at the definition of sex symbol. This is the Renault de Chevaux, and it is like the original French automobile. As you can see, it's got swag like from head to toe, you already know. No, that wasn't scripted. So this was all one dude's house. Stay in school, kids. So the Louis, Louis the 14th wanted, uh, wanted people to call him the Roi Soleil, the King of the Sun, because he likes the sun. To be in the highest yeah, position, the power, the power right? Mm -hmm. The Roi Soleil. And that's kind of like, I guess, what inspired so much of the gold decor right? too. Right, even in the garden, you have a lot of things that looks like the sun. It was, the <laughs> it was like, from... I don't care, you just have to make it work. And then people just build it and yeah. then do it again. And there's a, some part of the, the castle that were built and then they destroy it because he didn't like it. So they wow. had to redo it all again. Just a man with a small dream. That's what it's about. There's no better way to show off than this property here. It's magnificent. Bonjour, 
and good morning. It is the final day here in Paris and the last thing I wanted to conclude this video on is showing you a little bit about what it would cost to live in Paris. Now I don't have extensive research. A lot of this I got by talking to friends who have lived here for several years but these are the numbers I've come up with. For you to be the most budget end staying in a very tiny tiny room much smaller than this on your own it's gonna cost you around 600 euros and even that will not get you into the downtown area. You'll probably have about a 30 minute to 45 minute commute to get in. For a one person loft where your kitchen is in your bedroom, essentially you have one room, uh, you're looking at like 800 euros for something that's relatively comfortable and still being very, very basic, still outside of the city. About 1200 euros, you've got a two bedroom, maybe you've got a separated kitchen, and again, you're about 45 minutes outside of the city. This is not a long term rental. This here is 105 US dollars a night, I'm right in Champs Elysees, like in the heart of the downtown area, one of the most expensive areas you can be in. It's even got its own separate kitchen, nice to have. Bathroom, it's one of the smallest showers I've ever used, but it works living quarters. Those are the rough prices. It's not a cheap city to live in, but I'm sure you didn't expect that when you thought of coming to Paris. If you guys like this video and you want to see more of my smiling face, then click on up here, hit that subscribe button and become part of the channel. And if you want to see a video very similar, just like this, but made in Bali, click on my how to live in Bali video right up here. And if you're coming to Paris, you want some more tips, get my five hot tips to Paris by clicking down here. Let's get lost again in the next one.